Have a lot of debt? Issues with your student loan payments or IRS problems? Get the answers to all your legal questions and more on Behind the Law with attorney Justin Clark every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on TV 27. I can see all the text messages coming through. It just stresses me out. Oh, you just okay. put it in uh, Do Not Disturb. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or we can turn it around. And welcome to another edition of Behind the Law. My name is attorney Justin Clark here to answer any legal questions you may have. Anything from accident to zoning, dial up the phones 321 282 1055. Plenty of answers to your questions are on the website uh, www. My first time, McDonald. <laughs> I've never done this before. www. You have power.com. Anything from accident to zoning. 321 282 1055. During the week, focusing mainly on bankruptcy, IRS problems, real estate, personal injury, and even your student loan debt. But for the purposes of today, you can call us for anything. Many ways to interact with us. Watch us live on Facebook at ATTY Justin Clark. You can watch this show live or any past show. Watch the television program Sunday mornings. 10 o'clock a.m. Central Florida is 27 WRDQ all throughout the week. We're on Bud 941, our favorite radio station. My co host wearing the blue dress. If you're watching us live, if you're listening, you can't see, you can just imagine is Allie Mack. Hi, Allie Mack. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank I feel you. like I've seen you a lot today. Uh, yeah, a lot. And this <laughs> week, right? <laughs> We've also, as always, invited the face of Bud 941 and Orlando <laughs> radio I've never legend called the face. Mick Dolan. Mick, how are you, sir? I've What's got a up, face man? for radio. That's what I'm saying, man. Okay, I mean, nice. they, you know, they did put you on TV for a reason. That's Likewise, right. I mean, yeah. look, no, no one's like beating down my door to read the news it, on television. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. You know, Bud 941 was kind enough to ask you and I to do a daily program together, but that's radio, you know? Yeah. yeah. They, they, I think they even said, you know, maybe you shouldn't do streaming live on Facebook. <laughs> Was that for me or you? you think I think it was for you. Combo? <laughs> Who knows? Well, it's face. So they will see a face. True. So what a show we have in store for you Absolutely. today. I mean, this is going to be a real learning experience for all of us because it's something that probably, I know I don't know much about, and you probably don't know much about either, but it's, it's cryptocurrency, all right? It's blockchain. It's... What in the world? How do we use this money online? Uh, everyone's raving about how they're making. Oh, a bunch of questions. How they're making. <laughs> how are they making? How are my friends, you know, exploding in their income because they're investing in Bitcoin? What is this all about? How do I get involved? Should I get involved? Is it too late? All of these questions are going to be answered over the next hour. My good friend Tony Tate from Currency Cadets. Tony, how are you, sir? Thanks for coming. I am in. doing fine, Just Thanks for having me, man. I so, really, really appreciate it. So right off the bat. What is Bitcoin? I mean, I, I don't know. So here, on, honestly speaking, I think a lot of people think Bitcoin is used to buy drugs online. Okay. That, 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 that's what a lot of people think it's for. I mean, that, it, I don't know if that's how it started, but some of uh, us idiots out there who, who really haven't ever been involved in trading of Bitcoin, we don't know. We don't know what it is, but we heard at the very beginning it was for like doing bad things. Right, right. Is that still is that still the case? Uh, well, as long as you have human beings with uh, you know ulterior motives, there's going to always be bad people. But you know, it's so funny because I, that was one of the things that I heard as well. You know, like is that something that you know drug dealers do? I'm like, well, last time I checked, drug dealers also use cash. I'm not about to stop using cash. So um, if you have a good and somebody wants to exchange for any kind of value, whether that's tangible or intangible, there's going to be a transaction that takes place. So it's not just hookers and coke anymore, is what you're saying? Uh, no, I don't think they even call it coke anymore. Okay, but uh, good. we're gonna say no. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go with the no. So, yeah, well, uh, I mean, so, so we are learning something. So I heard. Yeah. So I heard. I know that. So, well, <laughs> honestly speaking, we, right, we've right. all had friends out there who have come up to us and said, "You got to get on the Bitcoin train. You have to, <laughs> right?" I mean, right. They, they, we've we've all heard that. Right, right. But what is this currency? You have to help me understand what this real currency is because. We all know how to use cash. You know, right. We all know how to use a debit right. card. Mm -hmm. You run your debit card, it comes out of your bank account. You use your credit card, you have to pay Amex at the end of the month. This is a whole new currency. Right. And sometimes it's hard for me to wrap my head around it. Help me understand how this currency actually works. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Before I even do that, if you think about it, if, if those of us who are old enough and, and paid attention in school and our grandparents and things, there's really only been about five different types of instances of money. in human creation really you had 
beads and pearls and then somebody had some bigger ones and then there was no way to really centralize that then you got to where we decided to use precious metals you know and then we decided to get into paper money and then you know electronic money so now we're doing you know cryptocurrency and that's what basically you know that's kind of where we are now so Bitcoin in and of itself it is it is a cryptocurrency it is not something tangible that you can hold but if you think about it I you know I don't know how many times I actually keep a bunch of cash on me anyway and the value is really in the technology behind it which is blockchain so blockchain gave birth to, to Bitcoin uh, you gotta help me understand, Mick. I mean, do you? Do you <laughs> You're asking me. I, I mean, no. I'm, I'm just trying to see. I'm if, not the guy. No, I'm just trying to feel out how dumb I am. I was, I was looking at you to see if you were like shaking your head, like, yeah, I get it, or, or not, because no, I was, I was actually right. just shaking my head. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So, it's, yeah. So, all right, we have Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the currency. Yes, Bitcoin is the currency. It is one. It is. I call it the grandfather of them all. Kind of like the Rose Bowl was the grandfather of all the bowls because it's the biggest, the baddest. It holds its value. When everything else drops, it doesn't drop as much, and it pretty much has a market cap uh, of over fifty percent of all the cryptocurrency that's out there. But then, what is blockchain? Blockchain is quite simply it's a public, it's an electronic public ledger. You can't hide it. It's almost as if um, blockchain, it's, it's like blocks of information, and I think we're, we're there, mm -hmm. and it's all chained together all the way back to its inception. So if you wanted to verify a transaction, which is why JP Morgan Chase, which is why uh, Goldman Sachs, a lot of them are investing a ton of money right now into the blockchain because they want that transparency and it's just irrefutable, and you can't hack it. Where is the information, that, like the ledger? Right. Where, where do you find that? It's it's internet based, just like the internet. Nobody. So there's owns a website that, you, or some kind of website you have to go to. There's actually a few websites that you can use to actually trace a transaction on the blockchain. But to do that, you need to have the address. Kind of like you'd have to have your account number. If you call the bank and they want to verify you, you have to give them your account number. Well, if you go to like a a block cipher website and someone says, "Hey, I have X amount of dollars in Bitcoin." I want to pay you, but I don't want to use my checking account for whatever reasons. Because I tell you what, my most fun is when I deal with real estate and cryptocurrency. I've spoken, I've had a few speaking engagements just in the last month. But if I wanted to send you some money, there's this big old, and, let's, and we're only talking about Bitcoin. There's a bunch of other cryptocurrency, but just to keep it simple, uh, you know how you have like a, a eight or twelve digit or thirteen digit. I think checking account number, I think 13 is the most because of the central banking system. Mm -hmm. Well, Bitcoin has a 34 alphanumeric string that is your address. And inside of there, there is an opportunity for you to have like a private key, which, which acts like your PIN number. So as long as you never give somebody your private key, which again, it's another set of numbers or a code, you can have your public address out there and anybody in the world who has Bitcoin, they want to send you Bitcoin, you just put your public address out there and someone can send you money through the blockchain. You know, a big shout out to uh, my good friend, the Seminole County tax collector, yes. Joel Greenberg. You know, Joel ha is now accepting payment to, through the tax collector's office with Bitcoin. But it leads me to this question. Uh huh. So I have all this money sitting in in my account, my Bitcoin account or whatever, what all businesses will accept that money? Well, interesting you say that. And this is very Googleable, by the way. And I don't know if Googleable is a word, but we're just going to say Googleable. Well, I, I, I like it. Hashtag Googleable. There you like go. It. So there's, for example, there was a time where it was kind of cool to pay your, uh, your car insurance with USAA and Bitcoin. You know, it was kind of cool to stay, you know, at an SPG resort you know, uh, and pay and book your reservations with that. There's JetBlue, you know, they'll allow you to pay for Bitcoin to, to book your airline. So there's a lot of companies that are forward thinking and are understanding that this is, an, a, this is a new asset class, right? This is, an, a, this is something that is amazing. It cannot be, it is an automatically a, a product or asset class that you cannot, under any circumstance, inflate it. It's purely, it's worth what it's worth. But doesn't that value go up and down? It goes up and down, and it is probably to date in human history, in my humble opinion, um, probably the purest 
the purest form of supply and demand. Even though we took economics in high school, they said, well, you know, you'll probably never have a purely supply and demand society. I think Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is the closest thing that you'll ever have to that. So I put $10,000 into Bitcoin mid-August 2017, let's say. I didn't. I guess I wish I did, but I didn't. But okay. let's just pretend that I did. All right. Ten grand mid August two thousand seventeen. As we sit here in mid August two thousand eighteen, how am I looking? You'd be looking great because uh, someone can obviously go to Trading View or Coinbase. But I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Bitcoin was around twenty six hundred dollars a coin uh, August of last year, and then uh, it went up. So it's again like anything else, the value goes up, it goes down. Um, I try to make sure that I don't give people um, advice because I don't have to get in trouble with the people regarding a Series 6 or a Series 7. So I always teach them how this works. So I do the education part and I let them know. I give them an opportunity to understand when you should sell it and when you should buy it. From an instructional standpoint, it's not from giving investment advice. But right now, Bitcoin is sitting around 64 or 6,500. So you're two and a half times your investment by just sitting on it. Gee, hindsight's twenty twenty always. And that's right, it's behind you. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I want to go spend, I want to go to the tax collector's office and pay for my, my tax bill in Bitcoin. What do I have? Do I have a card? Do I have a, a yeah, number? How does that work? Yeah, how does it work? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. Number one, there are a few companies out there, and if somebody wants to know, they can obviously comment on here, but uh, one is BitPay. BitPay is one of the people that actually set up the, the Seminole County uh, tax collector's office. I also... Uh, do a lot of things with BitPay myself and you can go in there with your your ID with your your QR code and you can pay that way or if you're still trying to bridge that gap between I don't want to be all crypto but maybe kind of a little bit I want to access it uh, BitPay, Coinbase, Cash App um, there's a few companies out there that will actually keep your money in your Bitcoin wallet we don't say Bitcoin account we say Bitcoin wallets They'll keep your money in your Bitcoin wallet, and they will tie to it a Visa debit card. Is now the time to buy Bitcoin or stay away? Well, right on the other side of this break, Justin Clark with you. Behind the law, bud, 94 more. All right. You got to watch out. Justin, will che things. he'll huh? sneak that in. Yeah, that was the most, that was fun. We have three more segments of fun. I, I haven't even scratched the surface of the question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I about Bitcoin mining being worth it. Mm -hmm. mining. Yeah, I have the yeah, I have a I have a really good setup with that too, and it's sweet. Perfect. Yeah. So, so by so all means, you guys chime in. I'm not yeah. trying to uh, wait for the question. question. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm going to ask so you much. about the real estate because I know that there's real estate companies that you've been also consulting yeah. with and training because 16 people today. from come from overseas to buy homes with Bitcoin. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm, I'm going to ask you a little bit about that and then how you get. How does a person get started in Bitcoin? Yeah, do they for sure. go? Do they contact? You know, they see me first, and they... then I teach them. Yeah, so I can either take them through an educational course, or we can just help set them up. I have, there's a few banks that do a lot of institutional mining, and I love it. Can you purchase a car through Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah, cars, homes, anything. Anybody that's willing to accept it, you can buy anything for what anybody wants to accept. But if they were up, okay. there's one commercial office building they went for twenty million dollars in Fort Lauderdale, and the person paid it all Bitcoin. Um, because, you know, which is kind of cool because the guy probably, he never made a purchase bigger than 15 grand because the person who did that was 22 years old and he has about 600, oh, excuse me, 66,000 Bitcoin, which is roughly worth about $455 million. I wish he was my kid. Mm -hmm. Hey, you heard that? Yeah, really. So you're definitely going to repeat that on the air, though. Yeah. yeah. That was crazy. That was crazy. watching on Facebook Live, they heard that, so there you go, they can maybe ask some questions about that, so, for sure. what they say. Yeah, a lot, a lot of fun. Who made your, uh, your backdrop there for you? Speedy Threads. Speedy Threads. Shout out, Angel. Angel, Angel from Speedy Threads. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Says our uh, backdrop. Uh, Did he get it to you? Really quick business cards. Yeah, we ordered it on Friday. It came right in properly. Moving on Monday. All right, you guys oh, ready? Wow. That's really cool. Yeah, let's do it. Repeat. That's amazing. Yeah. 
Welcome back to the show. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Behind the Law with me, attorney Justin Clark. And Ali Mac, Orlando radio legend McDonald is here. The beautiful Brianna is making sure we're live on social media at ATTY. Justin Clark talking to our good friend, Tony Tate. He's with Currency Cadets. We're talking all things crypto currency. Tony, how do people find out more information about you, sir? Uh, pretty easy. They can just simply go to currencycadets.com, C-U-R-R-E-N-C-Y-C-A-D-E-T-S.com. They can find me on Facebook, Currency Cadets there. They can find us on Instagram, Currency Cadets. All right, so cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is just like one brand name of cryptocurrency, and there's a tons of other names, right? Correct, yeah. Uh, some of my favorite ones are some of the... Uh, the lesser known ones where I've made some really good, really good money, was able to, to do some really cool things uh, in and around that. So yeah, Bitcoin is the big one. Anything else, and here's a little trip too, anything that is not Bitcoin, but it is cryptocurrency, it's called an altcoin, which is short for alternative coin. Mm -hmm. So like Ethereum, Litecoin, Polymath, EOS, I know I'm just going blah, 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 It's blah, like blah, learning blah. a whole new language. It is, it's a, it's a finance language. It's, but Bitcoin is obviously the, the big dog. Bitcoin is, is never going anywhere. It is proof, it is stood the test of time. It is nine years in running. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, it just is. And so um, it's there. What okay. does the term mining mean? Mining, that's really cool. So when, when people are talking about mining your cryptocurrency, what I love for that is think of mining. Uh, you know how people used to mine for gold? You get a bunch of people together, they're digging, and then whoever gets to the good spotter hits that gold vein, boom, they get the reward of finding the gold. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're gonna talk about it, we're gonna translate that example, if you can put your nerd hats on, because basically mining is simply solving a mathematical equation, uh, algorithmically, basically with an algorithm. So you get into this block, so there's this pool, so all these computers are running these computer software programs, and they're trying to verify all the transactions. So let's say I made a transaction, I sent you some money, and that's recorded forever in the blockchain. You sent some money to Ali. Well, once that has, what's, once it's been confirmed by these other miners, and just think of them as like little teeny tiny electronic accounts going through and verifying these transactions, wh whoever verifies the transactions first and those that are inside of that block, you get the reward. So every four years, that reward gets cut in half. It started out when you mined it, there was a block, boom, you get 50 Bitcoin. Then after four years, that's what's called a halving, where the reward gets cut in half. Then it's 25. Just recently, we are in a place now where Bitcoin is 12 and a half Bitcoin per block when it's mined and everybody's there. Now, Bitcoin is not gonna, it's, it's set up, there's only gonna be a finite amount of Bitcoin ever, and it, it just, it's just set up that way. And the 17 million of the 21 million has already been mined. So once we get to 21 million, what happens? Well, in the year 2140, um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll look down from heaven and figure out what's going on. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> depends on how many transactions you do. As far as getting to heaven, right? We don't have quantum computing in the palm of our hand yet, so we're not going to reach it. In so, so there time. is a finite amount. Absolutely. Of value. Yes, I, so it's an anti into it's an anti inflationary price. You can't blow up, you can't overinflate the price of Bitcoin because there's only so there's much only so much of it that's going to be there. So I want to go buy uh, some some Apple stock later today, right? I call my financial advisor. Boom, done. I want to go sell some Apple stock. Boom, done. How long does it take to actually buy Bitcoin? It takes about eh, maybe thirty or forty seconds. I mean, people have been complaining that there's like a waiting period or something. What, what are they talking about? So, well, with, do you know what I'm starting? Yeah, I mean, so with anything, there are, there's going to always, whenever there's an opportunity like this, whether it was the gold rush or whether it was, you know, anything else, man, there's going to always be bad actors in that, in that space. And there's going to always be misinformation disseminated. And people, there's always going to be a fear campaign, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Because we naturally fear what we don't know. Mm -hmm. But... It doesn't take any of that. I mean, for example, if I wanted to send somebody to www.currencycadets.com forward slash Coinbase, they buy a hundred bucks worth of Bitcoin, they'll have it in a couple of seconds, or if they use their checking account, it may take two or three days if they use the checking account. But guess what? They're gonna get 10 bucks, 
10 bucks of free Bitcoin and I'm going to get 10 bucks of free Bitcoin. So we're all going to do it together. But if they go by themselves, they won't get that bonus by just going to Coinbase on their own. Now, go ahead. I think Ali Mack has a question. Yeah, we have yeah. a question from one of our viewers from Candice. What huh? is Bitcoin Cash? Ah, Bitcoin Cash is an altcoin. Okay. It's an alternative coin. Bitcoin Cash. There's Bitcoin Cash, there's Bitcoin Gold, there's Bitcoin Energy, there's Bitcoin Dark. So there's these other things that use the same mathematical algorithm to try to make sure that they're getting the same currency, but they're not Bitcoin, so they're an alternative coin. So they're, it's a completely separate currency. Sony gets hacked, right? Remember Sony was, got hacked maybe three or four years ago, two or three years ago, and uh, there's all this cyber crime out there. Right, right. I'm worried constantly about my law firm getting hacked. You know, we get crazy emails all the time. Oh, for sure. It's a constant worry, cyber crime, and it's really almost terrorism in a lot of ways too, Mick. You know what I mean? There, there are other countries terrorizing us <laughs> through, through the internet, so to speak. Right. Bitcoin is not something I hold in my hand. I mean, what prevents cyber criminals from crashing this whole thing down? Man, that is a great question. Uh, I have a few initiatives that I work with. There's some other individuals and other companies that I know that are trusted. And they basically, that, that is their whole purpose is cybersecurity. I, for me, I teach my currency. Well, we have these things in with my company and we call it cadet club memberships. And one of the things that I teach people when they get a cadet club membership is how to secure your investment. Whether you use cold storage, where it's like, you ever seen those spy movies and somebody put something in the USB port of the computer and the numbers always change, you gotta put the code, you know, things like that. They're like a hundred bucks, you know, we sell those and that is, there is no point of intrusion. So getting to the Sony issue, you know, you have something that is running on, and I don't wanna to get too taken here with like Apache servers or PHP or, or something like that. So there's gonna always be an intrusion point, a pressure point. Bitcoin is not unhackable because it's never been attacked Bitcoin takes a heartbeat every 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes, that algorithm changes. So if you can so you can try to crack a Bitcoin address, you don't know if it has 10 bucks in it or 10 million bucks. So why as a criminal am I gonna spend my resources, hundreds of thousands of dollars to try to get into a 10 minute window to crack a 34 digit alphanumeric address to do that. Whereas when somebody's hacking into your office or Sony, they're only dealing with a four-numbered IP address. This is going to be the most ridiculous question of the day. I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> Do I get statements every month for Bitcoin? You won't get statements every month as an automatic thing, but you log into your Bitcoin account and you can get a tax statement through Coinbase. Can I pay extra and get a statement? I'm just used to getting statements. Yeah, that's, that's just, right. Justin likes to go. <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, just get. Hey, you can give me a, a you know a letter of authorization, and we'll just I'll make sure we log in there and just download your tax statement and just send your report every month. So there you go. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that brings up the next question, I guess, is uh, what, what do I get at 1099 at the end of the year? What, yep. what am I getting at the end of the year to show my earnings? So that's a great question. So here's the cool part, because the SEC and the IRS were having fits, and I love saying that. Um, shout out, uh, much love to anybody who's watching this that works for the IRS. I love you. I pay my tax on time. I make charitable donations all the time. Uh, but anyway. Uh, he, he inflates his charitable donations <laughs> at the end of the year. And he pays in Bitcoin. <laughs> so, for the, oh, so let me say this. I am not a CPA, a bookkeeper, or a tax attorney, although I play one on the internet. Okay? Oh, okay. But for the most part, in all seriousness, uh, there's three different types of income based on my experience. You have short-term gains long-term gains, and income. And so as long as you're taking anything, uh, when you're withdrawing your Bitcoin, right, into your checking account, then it's in there for a reason. So how, why are you pulling that money from your Bitcoin? Think of it as this, if you were in an overseas international market and you had uh, gains and you're making X amount of money in euros, well, the United States government and the IRS, they're not going to tax you on your euros until the moment you exchange those euros for American dollars because they have no, absolutely no jurisdiction. The IRS can't do anything about any earnings you have overseas until you bring it into your, until you bring it into uh, an American U.S. bank and you're residing here as a U.S. citizen. You have to report your earnings, whether they're long-term gains, short-term gains, or it's just simply income, depending on how you are receiving it and what you're receiving it for. What are some of the names of Bitcoin's competitors? What are some of these other cryptocurrencies that that, that are big players in the game. 
here's so here's the great thing about it. There is no there there is no competition per se between one coin versus another. It's just value. Um, people like to say things like, for example, there's a coin called EOS, which I'm super high on. I love that coin. Uh, it was a you know it is touted to be the uh, Ethereum killer uh, because it's supposed to be faster and all these different coins. These coins have a purpose, and sad to say. I'm just going to go on record and say this, man. About 90% of all the cryptocurrency coins out there are just crap. They just are. You have to have somebody that knows how to sit there and look at that and say, okay, this isn't some, you know, pump it up Ponzi scheme. You know, Joe Schmo down the street, him and his nerdy buddies got together. They launched a cryptocurrency and they got a bunch of people in these private chat rooms pumping up the value of it and then they're going to make off with it. You know, you, you, you know, you got to be able to look at the development team for one. It, does that token have a use? Because there's some coins that are worth a lot of money. They don't do anything. <laughs> so people watch the ticker on Fox News or CNN to, to yeah. look at their stocks, right? See how they're performing. Uh, let's see how the New York Stock Exchange is doing, the S&P, mm -hmm. that sort of thing, right? Right. I'm going to look and see, okay, the S&P did this today. Is mm -hmm. cryptocurrency in any way correlative with what I see on the ticker? Absolutely. stinking -lutely. You can look on, it depends on where your Bitcoin is if you're having it in an exchange. You will get... Uh, it'll, it'll, whether, and I don't want to get into forex and trading too much here, but there's a such thing as called stochastics and Fibonacci squares. And if you trade, you kind of know how to read charts, all that kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. Nice. No. But CNBC, CNBC crypto is a good place if you just want to look at CNBC crypto. Yahoo Finance is one. Robinhood cryptocurrency, that app is one. Uh, Blockfolio, which is what I use to keep track of what I do within my cryptocurrency, just to kind of see the value of what my holdings are. Y Yahoo Finance. Yahoo Finance. So that's by Yahoo backs that. Well, it's not that they back it; they report on it. Well, who actually has it, though? Uh, you have it. You in your Bitcoin wallet or your cryptocurrency wallet. You store it. You have it. See, banks have to have a fiduciary responsibility because they deal with your money. You deal with your own money. Justin Clark with you on Behind the Law, 321-282-1055-www.youhavepower.com. You can watch the show Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. Central Part is 27. Watch us live on Facebook or any past show on Facebook at A-T-T-Y, Justin Clark. I've got Ali Mack in the room with me. I have Orlando radio legend McDolan over there. The beautiful Brianna is behind the scenes pushing buttons. <laughs> Making sure we're crookedish or not crooked, one of the two. I can't really tell. Not crooked? <laughs> no. no? So if you have any have questions, crooked, you can't have a crooked. Any board. questions whatsoever for my good friend Tony Tate of Currency Cadets? He's a chief blockchain asset analyst over at Currency Cadets. 321 282 1055. We got a full half hour ahead with Tony Tate. My name is Justin Clark. Behind the law, Bud 94.1. You got 20% left on your battery. Oh, I do? Okay, it's it's gonna save, save. Who's got a, my Bitcoin? Justin said he has it first. Oh, do we need? You got an iPhone charger? Yeah. All right, let's see. Find one over here. Over, over this way. Okay. I don't know if it's going to reach. Oh, okay. That's this one. Okay. Oh, it might reach. Oh, we got another one over there. So we got a second. We can move your tripod over where you're at. We can move the tripod. Change the angle of the tripod. Just yeah, a little bit better. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. We'll, we'll change the angle of the tripod. Oops, sorry about that. Be right back. Okay. This is behind the scenes, y'all, so it doesn't really matter. This is all be with this yeah. is all <laughs> Tune in Sunday morning on channel 27. <laughs> We're actually having Ray Bozzi on the show next week and he does cybersecurity. Oh really? Yeah. Does Ray go? We'll ask him. Um, I kinda liked how you set up that guest thing. I like the format. Oh, for the weekly panel? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Be nice to drop it every Saturday so everyone knows it's coming up. Alright. Mm -hmm. uh, Just waiting on McDonald, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> He's making a vodka drink. I'm, <laughs> I'm not mad at him. I'm just sure. I just want to be sharing. Because sharing is caring. Yeah. Sharing yes. is caring. Sharing is caring. Especially with vodka. <laughs> it's, he's really not. He's getting a bud. <laughs> nice. Nice cold Budweiser. Mm. For sure. Get a nice cold and some water. Yeah, my son was doing that uh, cybersecurity. I work with a, I work with a few firms. Uh, 
the point is we had a we we took part we actually have some ownership in a cryptocurrency that specializes in private security for high profile individuals yeah. and also military grade security. You know, and they and so they're doing a lot of other things. They were actually uh, I met uh, I got to see him again. Actually, I've had him on my show. I've interviewed him. His name is Jose Neto with Secure, and um, we nice. got we got a lot of that coin. Sweet. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, you ready? Anyone need a water? Let's get yes. her done. All right. And welcome back to the program. My name is Justin Clark. Thank you for tuning in for another edition of Behind the Law with me and Allie Mac. 321-282-1055-www.youhavepower.com. Right here on our favorite radio station, Bud 941. I've got Tony Tate here. He's with Currency Cadet. Chief Blockchain Asset Analyst. Long. I don't know what that means. I mean, that should be the first question. What the hell does that even mean? Right? I mean, what do you think? Make, what, what, do you want know what that means? I'm clueless. All right. But we, I know that Tony is a good sign yeah. language guy. We're talking, about, <laughs> we're, we're talking about cryptocurrency, you know, Bitcoin, blockchain, that sort of thing. I know you have a lot of questions. Feel free. Watch the show on Facebook at ATTY Justin Clark. And you guys ask us questions directly. Marcus says... What is the best way to store slash save my Bitcoin? That depends on what you want to do with it. So we're gonna, I'm just going to answer the question as he asked it as far as the best way to store it is cold storage. Offline storage, cold storage, hard wallets, best way to store it. Uh, save it, obviously, uh, you know, the whole penny saved is a penny earned kind of a thing. Um, so whether you use a web wallet like Coinbase, whether you use a desktop wallet like Exodus, or a cold storage wallet like uh it's a Ledger Nano and all that. It's about this size here of your keychain, and it plugs into the side and it secures uh, all of your Bitcoin long term. So if you want to keep it, put it in storage, that's the best way to do it to keep it super secure. If somebody stole that, wouldn't matter. You have to have the pack. Uh, you get a tw password. 24 word <clears throat> backup phrase that you have to use to be able to review that. So even if they stole it, they can access it. I'm a big restaurant guy, right? So let's say that uh, I'm running low on cash in my Wells Fargo account, but I've got some Bitcoin laying around, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I, I want to go out to dinner. I want to go have a nice dinner with the wife, you know, have a bottle of wine, whatever. How do I know what restaurants take Bitcoin? How do I know where I can go? Um, like I said, if, whether you Google it or not, that's one thing. We're actually in the process of adding that feature to our website. Uh, we're out there soliciting people if they want to take Bitcoin or Dash. In fact, there's a whole community in Delaware that uses, the whole town uses a cryptocurrency called Dash. It is the funniest thing everywhere. Bars, pubs, drivers, everywhere. Don't they, they also have ATM kind of type machines? Yes, we do that as well. Out yeah. of it as well? Yeah, we, we set people up with a Bitcoin. If people wants to have, if, they, if someone owns a convenience store, they want to get a Bitcoin ATM outside of their, uh, you know that story. We can, we can talk about that just because I have some criteria that I want to make sure that they have before I go and put a bit on yeah. ATM somewhere. Have you done that? Yeah. Where is it? Where is one? Uh, there's Where's some. Um, <laughs> just going to daytime. There's some in Pine Hills. There's some in Oviedo. Uh, there is. Uh, you know, shout out to anybody's in Pine Hill. That doesn't mean that it's bad, but you know, I just saw someone lose today. Kind of shook. But um, there, you can actually go to a couple different places and just kind of do it. Where is the nearest Bitcoin so ATM? It's local then. Yeah, they're local. Yeah, for sure. They're local. And also, I know that you have different services. I know that we're talking um, about Bitcoin, and, and I know that your services go a little bit more in depth if somebody wants yes. to join. <laughs> um, you know, you give them these monthly or yearly memberships where you're actually um, teaching them and guiding, coaching them. And I know you do a lot of um, business, not just, well, coaching people, not just in Florida, but in other states as well. Yeah, we actually have, uh, there's myself and five other individuals, uh, one in uh, England, shout out Jamie, one in uh, Russia, and also in Germany, one in South Korea as well. Mm -hmm. And so our job is to make sure that business owners who want to accept cryptocurrency, because it's only a 0.5% uh, processing fee versus 2.5% or 3.5% for Amex or any Visa, wow. they save money by doing that. So or if it's that just, is um, a bonus. Yeah, it's, it's huge, yeah. I mean, so uh, one guy, he owns a car dealership, you know, in Tallahassee, a Mercedes dealership in Tallahassee, so not too hard to figure out who he is, but he takes Bitcoin. You buy Mercedes and Bitcoin. So, you know, it's really good helping people like that get set up as a business. All right, so I'm a small business owner. I own a law firm, obviously. Let's say that I want to accept Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say, look, client, if you are, you're a Bitcoin guy, we're going to accept payment by you paying me Bitcoin. But 
let's say I'm a conspiracy theorist and I don't trust that this Bitcoin fad's gonna last, it's all gonna crash somehow. So I wanna accept Bitcoin, but I wanna trade it in for like real cash. Is sure. that something that a business owner can do? Absolutely, it, it works just like an ACH. So you basically have your Bitcoin, you decide to sell your Bitcoin through your Coinbase or your Gemini or any other chain that we help you get set up with. The next day that money's in your checking account. So most businesses take credit cards now. It's pretty simple. You call a credit card <coughs> processing company or Square or whatever, and they yeah. come out, and you now, now all of a sudden you take credit cards. You you put you attach it to your operating account for your business. Right. right? Easy right. enough. Right. I want to start accepting Bitcoin. What do I need to do? First of all, we need to get you set up with the Bitcoin wallet. And then we need to get you set up to, to an exchange. Now the exchange that you're set up with can have a Bitcoin wallet. We publish that address, or we actually just use the QR code. Somebody that has Bitcoin, they can scan that QR code with their phone, say how much they want to send you, and it's instantaneous. Do you, when you spend Bitcoin, do you feel, does it hurt like when you spend cash? You know what I mean? Like, uh, let, 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 let's for me, it does. Yes. No, that's a same question. I'm an accumulation let, Let's say that I, I, let's say I'm driving down Interstate 4 right now and this ultimate whatever it's called thing ruins all my tires. I've got to go spend 1200 bucks out of my, my, my Wells Fargo checking account for new tires. It hurts, right? No one wants to do right. that. Do I feel the same pain when I spend Bitcoin? Um, I feel a greater pain because $100 in my wallet today is going to be $100 in two years in U.S. dollars. But $100 a day in cryptocurrency could be about 300 to 350 bucks in two years. So uh, it, takes, it takes a bit for me to really spend my Bitcoin. I'm kind of in accumulation mode. I want to just get it because I'm waiting for mass adoption to hit and the price of Bitcoin to go up. Um, I have a humble opinion as to what I think it will be by the end of this year and then also the spring of next year. But, you know, that's that. So <laughs> what's the minimum that you can start off? Like say if I start an account with you, what's the minimum that I can put in? Ten bucks. Okay. Fifty bucks, a hundred bucks. So you start with ten dollars US. Yeah, scared yeah, scared money don't make money. I mean that's just something that I learned a long time ago. So <laughs> you just have to figure out what your appetite for investment is. He's good, folks. He's good. <laughs> He's really you just good. have to find out what that is for you. But listen, don't invest in Bitcoin to the point where you're eating tuna out of pouches and beans out of a can. Like, like all investments, don't invest any money that you can't afford to lose in case of a zombie apocalypse. Now you don't have that money because there's no internet anywhere in the world and so now your Bitcoin is usually short of a zombie apocalypse. Behind the law, we're talking to Tony Tate. He's a chief blockchain asset analyst with Currency Cadets. If you have any questions for Tony, go to the Facebook page and ask them right there, A-T-T-Y, Justin Clark, or just search for me, go to my personal page and, and you can just type in the question like Cindy did. Cindy says, Tony, are there any downsides to Bitcoin? Yes. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> there are probably about as there's probably about as many upsides as there are downsides. Uh, one, if you're not if you're not educated, because you know that it's saying where somebody can have just a little bit enough enough knowledge to make them dangerous. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. That that happens that happens in with cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, like it does in real estate, like it does in anywhere else that you're investing in. So you just have to know, where, number one, where are you buying? Are you getting it from a trusted source? Are you buying it from a website that, you know, uh, was got in trouble because uh, all of a sudden they just, you know, they, they have reports about them uh, in the community. The, the cryptocurrency community is very, very tight. Um, we know if somebody closes down and tries to rename themselves something else, like you can't do that without that, uh, without anybody in our community really knowing about that. Um, so we're really big about that. So some of the downsides are not having enough education, not having the right um, information, even if you do have some education, mm -hmm. and not using a trusted source or a verifiable source, uh, because there are a lot of mommy blogs out there masquerading as financial market, you know, proprietors, and it's really just somebody who's got some really slick web skills fooling you. So I'm not asking you for advice. Okay. I'm not asking you for investment advice, but okay. you are obviously an investor yourself when it comes to cryptocurrency, right? Yes, sir. As we sit here mid-August 2018, mm -hmm. we're gonna have you back on the show mid-August 2019. All right. What do you foresee happening with Bitcoin as far as value goes between now and then? Okay, so based on what I understand about Bitcoin, again, uh, make sure that you seek that of a financial advisor, but I firmly believe that 
Bitcoin is going to be well into the five digits. It's going to be way over $10,000 a coin. And where are we right now? Uh, right now, last I checked, we're about 6500 7500 7, somewhere in here. All right, so I want to invest in Bitcoin. <clears throat> Do I just, like, wire the money? How does it really work logistically? Logistically, if you were to go to one of those sites that I recommended or if someone bought a membership for me and I was holding their hand, we're sharing the screen, I say, go here, click there, go here, click there, then uh, we would go to a few places. You would give your information. They would do what's called a KYC, which is know your customer. They want to make sure that you're not part of a terrorist organization. Uh, also, so they run a background check on you? They don't run a back. Well, yes. yeah, they do. They do, in essence, run a background check on you. The, the global community does. It's an inter inter international standard. Mm -hmm. You know, they make sure that you are not on a terrorist watch list, and they also do what's called an AML. Make sure, they also say uh, anti-money laundering type things to make sure that you are not someone that is a nefarious character like that. Justin asks, can Bitcoin be purchased in fractions? Yes. You, here's the cool part. And this is, why, this is why I always love crypto. If you want to go buy stock in Amazon, it's about 1200 bucks a share, last I checked. Uh, you can't say, hey, I want to get about $585 <coughs> worth of Amazon stock. Yeah, can't split it up. Can't split it up, right? Can't do that. You have to maybe, if you're lucky, find a leveraged uh, brokerage that will let you get stock options where you don't own it, but you have the options of that stock that has a 1 to 10 or a 1 to 50 or a 1 to 100 ratio, right? So you would have to get that. But with, with Bitcoin, you don't need a middleman to buy Bitcoin. You don't need to go to a Bitcoin brokerage if there ever is one run. You don't need a Bitcoin trust. You don't need any of those things because you can buy a fraction amount of Bitcoin. Now, 100 bucks might be... 0.0054268, you know, because Bitcoin goes out eight decimal points where the U.S. dollar and most only go out two. My name is Justin Clark, and you're listening to Behind the Law on Bud 94.1. We have Ali Mack here, Orlando radio legend Mick Dolan joins us. We're talking to Tony Tate. He's a Bitcoin expert. At least you're going to ask Mick, a Bitcoin expert. But I remember MySpace. I remember MySpace. Oh, wow. Let's talk the about Bitcoin that. <laughs> become the next my space right on the other side of this break justin clark by 941 <laughs> you gotta bring up my space i know MySpace. <laughs> on that note can we also talk about the next one is bitcoin a bubble and the, the theory of if that bubble bursts don't want your answer now yeah for the that's that a, those are great questions i love destroying those kind of questions that's 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 a bubble yeah I love destroying those kind of questions because people ask that. I think people, when they ask if it's something's a bubble, you gotta yeah. understand, they don't even know what a bubble yeah. is. Right. They're just, they're, they're repeating something that they heard. That's is true. it a bubble? Right. You know? Well, we don't want to have a real estate bubble. <clears throat> yeah. So, see, the thing about that, it, you don't, where there is something where, you don't, first of all, bubbles happen when you have something that's centralized. You know, there is, for example, there is no, there is never going to be, and I know this is probably elementary, no, and it's a, but there's there's no there's never going to be a St. Augustine grass bubble because there's St. Augustine grass everywhere. If somebody's gonna always want St. Augustine grass, they just are. And so because there isn't a place that you have to go to, you don't have to do all this other kind of stuff where you pay tax you. and somebody else, you go and open up a St. Augustine grass account somewhere. Because it's centralized. Bitcoin is decentralized. Bubbles come from places that are centralized. Please answer your question. Oh, yeah. All right. So, so yeah, 12 good. minutes ahead. Day eight. Eight. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. If you have any questions, fire away. We're happy to answer them. Or Tony is, because I have no idea what the answer is. They are. <laughs> they are. Let's, ask them. Let's get it going. Oh, my God. Calm down. I want to help everybody, man. I want to help everybody. Calm down. Welcome back to the program. One final segment. Thank you for spending some of your evening here with us on Behind the Law. I'm Bud 94.1. We're talking to Tony Tate, Currency Cadets. How do people find more information about Currency Cadets and you, Tony? Well, they can just go to CurrencyCadets.com or Currency Cadets on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Google. We're, we're pretty much everywhere. We are where they are. All right. So the question is, what... It, We've seen all of these, we've seen fads come and go. Right. MySpace is a great example of one of these technological fads that popped up and then it was just simply gone. 
Is there any chance that this could happen to Bitcoin? And this is different. People weren't investing their money necessarily in MySpace. We were investing our time and uploading pictures. Not me, by the right. way, but, right. but it wasn't like we were investing in it. Oh, I have a Pe People are, are actually putting their hard-earned dollars into Bitcoin. Is this something that could just disappear? Um, short of the internet completely going down globally, no. Because here's the thing that Bitcoin does. Bitcoin is, in my, in my humble opinion, it is a global currency. It is borderless. It is faceless. You know, if you were in Uganda and you had a hundred dollars in Bitcoin, you wanted to send to me in America, I would still get it in a matter of minutes. We don't have to go through a central banking system because cryptocurrency is not centralized. It is truly a global economy. And so that's why I laugh when I see, you know, the SEC is thinking about doing this or somebody's thinking about doing this. I mean, no disrespect to SEC, whatever, but I think there's a U.S. arrogance because we are the leaders of this free world. We can't, we can't try to control something that's global. Nick Dolan, I'm curious to hear from you. So you have $50,000 laying around that you know you want to invest. What are your hesitations about putting that into Bitcoin? I think it's just, I'm still trying to get my head around. I am right. too. I really right. am too. Uh, it, I, I don't know. It's just not, my dad told me one time, because he, mm -hmm. he said, well, you, know, you're, you work in radio. There's, you can't touch it. There's, it's, in, it's the air. You're selling the air. And, and that's how I get, that, that's what I think about it. See, check this I out. I can't get it to my hand. <laughs> right. so, so that's a great answer. So check this out. I remember, you know, uh, I'm not a spring chicken, although I try to portray myself as one. There was a time when somebody wanted to go from New York to Springfield, Illinois, and check into a hotel. And they wanted to use a diner's club card. Well, what is that? No, we take cash. I don't know what that is. We take cash. Yeah. It's just about mass adoption. See, we don't even think about, people don't even think about how much money they have in their checking account unless their debit card stops working. That's true. I can't tell you to the penny what I have in my checking account. I can pretty much give you a better wall, ballpark figure how much cryptocurrency I have. That's because I'm in it. But, you know, it's how it's, it's just simply about understanding it. And that's why one of the first things we do when I start working with people is make sure they understand what this is. And we go at their own pace. So, Tony, I know that you've been doing a lot of seminars with um, real estate companies as well. Yes. Um, because I know that that's something that is also booming over here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that people are purchasing homes through Bitcoin, and you are also um, training or giving seminars to these real estate companies on how they could also um, structure their business to be able to accept that. So do you want to speak a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah. What's great is that we're we're coming up we're coming up with a we're building a database right now currently uh, and we're calling it Crypto Colleagues, and so where I've been able to work with the title companies in South Florida over the Panhandle uh, that are actually accepting cryptocurrency and signing up so that way they can use that because like I said in Seminole County you can use that as a settlement agent. So what is great about that is just you know when they understand it now they can start attracting more international buyers. Does it make it easier for it, an international buyer to buy it? Absolutely. If you live in Australia, you got to wire money. It takes three to four or five days for international wire. I could just wire you money from Australia to here in the United States in a matter of minutes. Wow. Okay. That's a definite advantage there. So keep your questions coming. Justin Clark with you on Behind the Law, 321-282-1055. Watch us live, interact with us on social media at ATTY Justin Clark, and you can ask us questions directly right there, just as Amy does. Tony, you say that Bitcoin is global. Do you think that cryptocurrency will ever destroy the global currency market? Ooh. There's a question. I, I surely wow. hope so. I surely and hope so. The recorder is on. <laughs> I surely hope so. Because here's the thing. There's, I think the central banking system went through something that if you're familiar, I won't bore you with the five stages of grief, right? You know, anger, you know, you did try to, you, you know, disbelief and all this other kind of stuff. So after the central banking system, namely, and I'm going to call out, and not that, you know, he's going to look me up, but Jamie Dimon you know, Chase that sat there on September the 14th of last year that said how crazy uh, Bitcoin was, but then there was a whole panel of advisors of J.B. Morgan Chase that called him in and have a sit and say, hey, listen, we just invested $73 million in Bitcoin. You can't be saying that it's a bunch of whatever. 
And so every time Bitcoin is down, Jamie, Jamie Dimon's voice goes up. But whenever Bitcoin goes up, he seems to somehow not, you know, whatever. So he kind of dig in. So I hope it destroys it because there's, everything is in the middle. I'm looking forward to the day. And I think it, it, when, I, when, I, when I say this, there was a time when trying to explain to my child that I had to, he had $25 in his checking account. And he wanted to, no, I'm sorry, he had $22 in the checking account, but he wanted to actually get his money to go to the fair. And he's 14, I'm trying to teach him about money. So he's like, well, Dad, I got this money in my account. And we went to the ATM. And he wants to get it out and say, well, there's a $4 fee. You don't have enough money, but it's my money. Why are they charging me for my money? Yeah. And he couldn't understand that, but even as a child, it makes sense to him. It's his money, he should be able to have his money. Mm -hmm. And that's because everybody in the central banking system has their hands in the pot. And so when you eliminate those fees, when you eliminate all of that stuff, now it's just pure commerce. I'm giving you money, you give me money, the network is self-sustained by the transaction, and nobody specifically gets all of that money. It goes into the pool. Nobody can tackle all the extra stuff. Yeah, it just, yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Will there ever be a cash version of Bitcoin? Meaning, let's say I want to go to a garage sale, and maybe, God forbid, I don't want to go, I'm just using an example. But you know, at a garage sale, they're only going to probably take cash. I guess is there something like I can print off no. and use it and do like a cash version of Bitcoin, or you think that's ever no. in the future? That that's kind of about five steps back because then you got to look at okay, where's the resource? How are you going to print? How are you going to secure that? What is it? You know, how are you going to put things in place when the money doesn't decide to counterfeit that? So it's you know, this is you know, for for all intents and purposes, I mean, that's just kind of a few steps back. That'll never happen. What technology do I need then to accept Bitcoin? Do I just need like a cell phone? Do I need a computer? What do I need? You can generate a Bitcoin address with emojis and a piece of paper because nobody can hack paper. One of my Bitcoin wallets is just simply paper. I have the private keys that I have to dangly type out if I want to send it. You don't even need an internet access to complete a Bitcoin transaction. Well, so how would you do it? Whenever it's there, I don't want to get too techy because that's not usually how we do it, but to keep it simple, let's just say if you have a smartphone or a computer and internet access, that's all you really truly need. What happens if you have a lot of money in your account, $100,000 100, in your account, and mm -hmm. say you pass away, okay. and you have this specific code that you only know, how is it that, you know, of course it's going to be, you know, if you have a will, it's going to be, you know, given to right. your next of kin and such, but... How are they going to have access to that if it's only under your name? Under your well, it's not It's not under your name. It's only under your name if you're keeping it like in a web wallet. But if it's in a hardware wallet, it's not anybody's name. If you have that 12, 20, 12 or 24 seated phrase to unlock that particular address, Bitcoin is yours. Let's you say it. that you don't have that. Let's say the guy dies suddenly and nobody can find it. The, yeah. the, password. the password. Yeah, there's a lot of there was a lot of reports last year where people who threw away a computer uh, went back and found it because it had Bitcoin on it. One guy he got taken to the cleaners, and I don't want to say his name because he is here in Central Florida. I love the dude. Um, we celebrated this particular result um, at Liam Fitzpatrick because he lost his shirt in a divorce. Lost his shirt. All he got to keep was his stupid computer that she hated because she said, now you and your computer can spend the rest of your life together. <laughs> well, he found a program where he actually backed it back up. There was a program, I'm, I can't think of what it was, but it backed up the hard drive. And so when he got a new, so when he, when he did that, he actually re, uh, re-imaged his computer and he realized he had a bit, he had about 600 Bitcoin on it. Now he's living in Oviedo, very, very happy. <laughs> so he made off all right. Yeah, he did, and he sold he sold about half of it when Bitcoin got up to about nineteen thousand dollars a coin. So, in other words, if you lose your password and if you pass away, it just stays there. Yeah, I mean, you want to put you want to put things in place so that way it's not probated, and you want to do all these other kind of things to make sure that your family's taken care of. It's like setting up a will. Really. Yeah, you need to do that anyway. So. Ch uh, Chase has a question for you, Tony. Do you have to report Bitcoin to the IRS? <clears throat> I ain't no one's moral compass. Um, but I am going to tell you the truth. That's what I always do when I work with someone. Right now, you're kind of in an, a, uh, you're on your honor. You're on your honor because there aren't places, there aren't things in place where they, just like they can audit and pull your, and freeze your checking account, they can't freeze your, they'll never be able to freeze your uh, cryptocurrency. But it is my recommendation to you that if you have a long-term, a short-term gain, or you're using Bitcoin as an income and not as a payment, because I send payments to my loved ones all the time, and I notate that in my ledger. 
Um, as long as you're uh, courting an income and you're living off of that, you should report any and all income to the IRS, absolutely. Good answer, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, think, I, I definitely think so. But they're not going to find you if you don't. And, and because of the fluctuation, I mean, how do you really know how much you have? Um, yeah, just looking at the exchange, these little tickers like CNBC or whatever, then you can all, you'll always, trust me, when you, when you have Bitcoin, you all of a sudden become this amateur financial analyst, like, okay, you're looking at charts, you're trying yeah, to figure yeah, this yeah. out, because yeah. it's like, how much money I make today? You got skin in the game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the future dirt. of Bitcoin in two sentences. Absolutely necessity. It's an absolute necessity. What do you think, guys? You ready? You ready to invest? You ready well, to invest in first Bitcoin? First, I have to get some money. Yeah. Well, if, <laughs> well, if you are interested in finding out more about cryptocurrency, possibly investing some of your money into cryptocurrency, I would suggest you call Tony Tate, Currency Cadets. One more time, how do they reach out, Tony? They can find me at currencycadets.com or anywhere on social media. They can call us in our office at 321-348-7247. What a pleasure it was having you on the program today. You did an excellent job, outstanding <laughs> interview. Right. And yeah, this, this is the kind of thing that we do on this program because people just don't know. People don't understand this about Bitcoin. So you know, keep tuning in to this daily version of Behind the Law with Justin Clark and Allie Mack. Allie Mack, thank you for being here. Good thank to see you, you again today. Nice to see you too. Thanks for, for having me, guys. Thanks I really enjoyed in. it. For Orlando radio legend McDowell and in the beautiful Brianna, my name is Justin Clark. Mick, I don't know much, but I do know one little thing. What's that? I will see you right back here next Monday on Bud 94.1. Excellent. Cut. Good job. Great job. That's a good guess. Yeah, man. Yeah, I thought so. That was the most questions we've ever gotten for you. <laughs> well, it's only show Tony has to come back. Four.